find the volume of the solid using a triple integral and cylindrical coordinates. Sketch the solid region D in R3 and sketch the solid's projection in the xy plane R in R2. And our solid region here is bounded by the curves z is equal to 12 minus x squared over 4 minus y squared over 4 and z is equal to 3. So the first thing that we want to do here is sketch the solid in three dimensions. And we know that the solid here is bounded by these given curves. So let's begin by identifying them. So we have our first curve, we'll start with the easier curve, z is 3, which is a plane. And then we also have the curve z is equal to 12 minus x squared by 4 minus y squared by 4, which is a paraboloid. And then to determine the orientation of this paraboloid's uh, concavity, is it opening upward or opening downward, we look at the coefficients on x and y. So making a little note here, since the coefficients on x and y are negative, the, this paraboloid opens downward. You can even think about a two-dimensional image here of a paraboloid opening downwards, concave down, and then we'll throw in a third-dimensional paraboloid there. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll sketch ourselves this graph. So let's say here's our z-axis, here's x and y. I'm going to make note of 12 and 3 on our z-axis here. So we know that the paraboloid is concave down and shift, or opening downward, and it's shifted up 12 units. So you have something like this. So here's our parabolic region, our paraboloid. And then we have a plane here at z is equal to 3. So I'm drawing a two-dimensional plane there, and then we'll round this out to give it that three-dimensional image. So we have our plane, z is equal to 3, and the paraboloid, z is equal to 12 minus x squared over 4 minus y squared over 4. And so this region within these two surfaces is d in three dimensions. So just in looking at this solid here, we can actually go ahead and state our z bounds. So we can see that the lower bound is our plane, so we have that z is greater than or equal to 3, less than or equal to the paraboloid, which is 12 minus, I'm going to factor that common 1 fourth out. So I have 12 minus 1 fourth times x squared plus y squared. And our reasoning in doing this is that we know we want to evaluate this triple integral in uh, cylindrical coordinates, so we'll need to convert to polar coordinates. So we can further rewrite our z-bounds here as z is greater than or equal to 3, less than or equal to 12, minus 1 fourth r squared. So the next thing that we want to do is to sketch this region, or to sketch the projection of this solid region into the xy plane. So again, using our three-dimensional image here, we keep in mind that the three-dimensional projection or the three-dimensional solid's projection is a shadow cast by this solid into the xy plane. So there's R. And let's do this a little bit more accurately here. We want to go ahead and sketch, sketch R and R2. And this again, this is the projection of D into the xy plane. And so we know in the xy plane, of course, that z is equal to zero. And the reason I say that we want to do this more accurately is that our pictures can be deceiving. So in order to find an accurate two-dimensional region of integration, here we're going to equate the surfaces and simplify.
So we can say here that 3 is equal to 12 minus, don't forget the 1 fourth. So we have 12 minus 1 fourth multiplied by x squared plus y squared. And now we want to go ahead and simplify this to solve for x and y to identify or recognize this region. So we can subtract 12 from both sides to give us a minus 9 is equal to negative 1 fourth multiplied by x squared plus y squared. And now if we multiply both sides here by a negative 4, we'll be able to identify our region. And so simplifying this, we have 36 is equal to x squared plus y squared, which we recognize as a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 6. So sketching this in two dimensions, we have the y-axis and the x-axis. I should have drawn my, or drew my circle first here, so take this with a grain of salt. That was a pretty good circle. So here is our two-dimensional region, R. And we know it has a radius of 6. So we'll draw little intercepts here. And we use this two-dimensional region here to identify the bounds on R and theta. So we can see that, again, the circle is centered at our origin, 0, 0. So the smallest radius is 0. R is greater than or equal to 0. The largest radial length here is going to be 6. And then because we have a complete circle, we know theta is going to be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. And now we have all the bounds that we need. We have our z bounds from our three-dimensional sketch, and we have the r and theta bounds here from our two-dimensional sketch, and we are ready to go ahead and set up this triple integral. So we know that the volume of our solid region D is defined as a triple integral over that region D. We let the integrand be 1, and our differential here is dV. So I'm letting theta be my outer bound, so that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 6, and then we have the integral from 3 to 12 minus 1 fourth R squared. Again, our integrand is just 1, and we know that our differential in cylindrical coordinates is r dz dr d theta. And we're ready to go. So you don't even really need to put this, this 1 there, just putting it there for emphasis. So we're ready to evaluate. So starting from the inside, we want to evaluate the inner integral. Notice we are integrating here at first with respect to z. So I'm going to make a little note to myself that r and theta are constants here. Right, so I'm just going to leave that r with the rest of the integral and just consider the integral from 3 to 12 minus 1 fourth r squared dz, which integrates to z. So we have z from 3 to 12 minus r squared over 4. So we have 12 minus r squared by 4 minus 3. And grouping our like terms or combining our like terms here, we're left with 9 minus r squared over 4. And we're now ready to go ahead and evaluate the middle integral. Let me evaluate the middle integral. So at this point, we just want to be mindful. Don't forget that r that we left with the rest of the integrand. So this integral is now 0 to 6 of r times 9 minus r squared over 4 dr. And distributing that r through, we have the integral from 0 to 6 of 9r minus r cubed by 4 dr. 
So we're using our power rule here. This is going to be 9r squared divided by 2 minus r to the fourth divided by 16 from 0 to 6. Yuck. But we can do this. So evaluating at 6 first, I'm going to have 9 halves multiplied by 6 squared minus 6 to the fourth all over 16. And then when we plug in 0, everything disappears. So I do not want to multiply 6 to the fourth because I can't use my calculator. So I notice we have a greatest common factor here of 6 squared by 2. So I'm going to pull that 6 squared by 2 out to the front, which leaves us with 9 minus 6 squared all over 8. So a little bit more reasonable to work with now. So we have 36 by 2, which we'll simplify, multiplied by 9 minus 36 over 8. So we know 2, of course, goes into 36 18 times. And 36 and 8 both have a 4 in common. We'll simplify this to 9 halves. So we are left now with 18 multiplied by 9 minus 9 halves. So getting a common denominator there, we'll have 18 multiplied by 18 minus 9 divided by 2. And we can simplify again. We know that 2 goes into 9, uh, 2 goes into 18 9 times. So you have 9 multiplied by 9, which is 81. So it wasn't so bad after all. And now we're ready for our favorite part, evaluating the outer integral. And this is with respect to theta. So you have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 81 d theta. So that's 81 theta from 0 to 2 pi. So you have 81 multiplied by 2 pi minus 0. And 81 times 2 gives us 162 pi. And don't forget, this is a volume here. So this is cubic units. So this is the volume of that solid region D we found at the beginning.